Welcome. Welcome to the World Surgery Tour 2022. It's such a great honor to have you with us, with experts from all around the world. Now, as I told you yesterday, today we will speak about cartilage. How can we do the cartilage, repair different techniques? And I'm so happy that besides the events with World Surgery Tour, like Rickcorn, Spine, Trauma and Sports, we're again number one with sports, trauma is now second, but sports is number one, and we will speak about cartilage. And I'm so happy that we have experts here. On my left-hand side, <coughs> Sven Schäffler, Professor Sven Schäffler from Berlin, and Daniel Günther, you know him from yesterday. We all three have something together. We worked to <coughs> in Pittsburgh some years ago at a, one of the world-famous research institu institution with Freddy Fu and Savio Wu. So I'm so happy that you are here. Daniel Sven. So welcome everybody. Um, today we are planning to show you an arthroscopic cartilage repair technique. It's actually the combination of the medically proven technique AMIG and combining it with a more and more popular becoming technique called a minced cartilage. Um, and I would like to run you quickly through a small presentation to kind of prepare you a little bit what you will see in the next couple of minutes. So maybe just run the presentation. So this patient we're going to see today, or we try to simulate today, is a tw classical 25-year-old patient, a young patient who had an ACL, suffered an ACL injury. And besides the ACL injury, he also has a focal cartilage defect. And ideally, we would like to repair both the ACL and the cartilage at the same time. So. Um, this is a patient um, you might see with a small focal damage right here. And this is a perfectly contained um, defect. Um, it's a focal defect. So these predispose the patients to a very favorable outcome if they are repaired in time and to prevent any arthritic changes later on. Now we know when it comes down to treatment options for cartilage defects and that there have been databases who collected the outcome data of all the techniques available. And based on these outcome data, the German Society of Traumatology um, published a guideline. And as you can see, when you look at the mid-sized defects between one to like four square centimeters, the matrix augmented bone marrow stimulation technique combining a microfracture technique with a membrane, a cell-free membrane, has been proven in five, ten-year follow-up data to be very favorable and successful. Um, but you can also see already, it has been mentioned, that there is a new technique emerging, which is called the minced cartilage. It's not really new, for the IMOV actually looked at it many years ago, but now it actually really picked up momentum. So the idea is actually that you can collect cartilage from the area of the defect, but it has been proven that a lot of these cells, the chondrocytes, are still uh, metabolically active, and they, are tr they try to be collected and then applied at the single stage procedure. So. The ideal procedure you would envision is a single step procedure. Ideally, you lose autologous tissue. It should be done arthroscopically. Ideally, inexpensive, no, cult no culturing required. And you want to have already some existing clinical evidence that this technique most likely going to uh, provide a good clinical outcome. And that is why the AMIC technique now has tried to com be combined with this minced cartilage procedure. Um, so. Why do I want to add a membrane to the cartilage? Because this cartilage obviously needs to stabilize um, and it needs to have some kind of protection. The membrane is an ideal um, possibility to contain the cells, to protect the cells, to make sure that the healing will progress in a timely fashion and provide an ideal new cartilage, full cartilage surface. Um, so now I'm going to give you a short idea about um, the idea how this procedure is done. So first of all, we're going to establish an arthroscopic portal, um, ideally in an orthogonal direction to the defect. Um, you can see on the left side, uh, that's called the cartilage punch. It's a, a, a cannula that provides a stable environment to insert and remove the instrumentations you're going to need for that procedure. 
Um, you see that little wire that's stabilized, then you have a little window, as you can see on the step two picture, which allows you to control that the placement of uh, this cannula is ideal. And then you have a reamer that allows you now to harvest the cartilage from the defect size. If, in case you cannot um, obtain enough cartilage tissue, you have also the option to go to areas where you typically, for example, would harvest cells for an ACI to have more cartilage that you can use in this one-step procedure to apply to the defect. Then, this is the AMIC technique. Once you've removed all the bad tissue from the subchondral bone, you're going to do a microperforation of the subchondral um, bone and then go on to now prepare the membrane, the cell-free membrane that will contain the cells that come from the subchondral bone and obviously going to protect the minced cartilage you apply to the defect. Um, this membrane will be prepared in a certain fashion. You're going to see in a second. Um, it's going to will, it will be matching the diameter of the defect. And then eventually it will be delivered through a special cannula either separately, first the minced cartilage and then the membrane, or that's what we're going to try today, we're going to try to apply them at the same time. So this is how it ideally should look like. You can do it as just one singular um, diameter application, or if the defect requires it, the geometry or the size, that you can also apply um, multiple patches right next to each other in order to f find a full coverage of the defect. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sven. Thank you very much, Daniel. Now you will go now to the stage and we will see what you will prepare. How can we treat the cartilage? We, everybody knows that cartilage lesions will, are increasing. People are getting older. They do more sports. We have more sports related injuries and especially the cartilage. And we all know that the cartilage cannot really heal. We have to treat. There are no nerves, no vessels. Why should cartilage heal? That's why we have to uh, replace it. Several techniques are now on the market. And I really am curious how they can solve the problem. And now, not just by open, so they try to do it atroscopically, bringing the cartilage cells, the chondrocytes, directly from the defect, around the defect, in the, in the prepared defect, together with a membrane, so like a surface, and it will cover the defect for the healing process. So let's go to the OR. Okay, when Sven is starting uh, doing his procedures, I would like to introduce the team pretty quick. We have here uh, Stephen Kramer uh, from the company Geistlich, who is uh, helping us with the surgery. So thank you, Stephen, for being here. Um, and also um, uh, Deputy Zintas Maltek, uh, who is uh, supporting us here. Thank you. So Sven, I'm very happy to perform the surgery with you. Daniel, thank you very much. So ideally, as you would always do it, you're going to start with an arthroscopic round and you will try to establish the site of the defect. Actually, Daniel was so kind to help me and prepare that a little bit. So let's get you a little overview that the medial femoral condyle. Um, and as you can see, that we try to create um, this focal cartilage defect. Now that's pretty small. We try to enlarge it a little bit and then eventually going to see um, how to repair it. First step is it's really important that you create an orthogonal axis to the defect size. So ideally you take a spinal needle or old, any type of needle that will allow you to probe the direction. So what you want to see on the arthroscopic image that your needle will enter the joint in a way that really the, you hit it as orthogonal as possible. Then you take a blade and create a portal. Now again, as you saw before, this cartilage punch has a certain diameter, so you better make sure that the portal is large enough. I always like to see my finger passing through that portal, so it's pinky ideally, um, so that I know that I have easy access to the tissue. As you can see here, when I do that, sometimes there's little um, fatty tissue in your way, so just take your time if you feel um, that you cannot see it, you're going to see my finger in a second. I'll, you take a shaver. I will strongly advise you to take that um, time to really remove a little bit the fat tissue right next to your portal because otherwise you're going to see it coming at you all the time 
and it would prevent you from having an easy exit of the cannula. Put this in. Yeah, what? So, yeah, here we go. So take your time a little bit to take the tissue away. Won't take too much time, but a little bit. Then you avoid the hassle of having an obstructed view during the procedure itself. All right. Then you have this, what's called the cartilage punch. This is this cannula. I'm not, if you can see it, I'll, I'll just bring it in there. Or can you show it? Ah, okay, perfect. So I have a, a, a trocar that allows you to bluntly bring in the device. Wait a second. Here we go. And now it's important to really position it correctly into the joint. Let me see. By planning the surgery, you are you doing some measuring yep. to know exactly how big it is? Because sometimes it looks bigger or smaller. I mean, you, as we said, the largest diameter of the cannula, let me just, um, it's about, I think, 10 to 12 millimeters, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. 10 millimeters. So you want to make sure that your defect at least can be cut. No, I need to have a little clean more shaver. Yeah. That's really important to clean it up extremely well. And the positioning was perfect, uh, I think, Sven. It really, looks really great. And now if we clean it up a little bit more, it should be easy to perform. So that's really a key step of the procedure. Do a little bit of flexion. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Once it came in, everything becomes easier. If you're not 100% sure it doesn't fit 100%, then don't continue. Okay, let's do it again. That looks great. Perfect. Oh, it needs to still come in. Mm. It's not in yet. Here we slowly go. Okay. Can you... F um, yeah. Like this? Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Now hammer. he can remove the cannula and then he takes a hammer or do it with... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, sorry, removes the trocar and then he's going to bang it. And important, you see these lines, they need to be banged in deep enough that the third line is Flush. The window. the window is important as yeah. well. Right. Let's see that. Let me see. Still some tissue there. Window comes. There is okay, the window. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Let me just see the. Okay, here we go. Now I'll punch it in. More. Okay. Let me see. I'm not sure. Okay. Could be good. Let's take a shave, I believe. So we're going to get a little more vision there. Mm -hmm. How can you avoid loosening so much water? Should. Yes, yeah, good yep. idea. Your finger. Thank you. Let's see that we see this again. Window is good. You can still perfect. go a little deep. But I would say go a little deeper okay. with a punch. Do you I'll put my, yeah. okay. Can you also uh, bang it over the troker? Ah, too bad. <laughs> okay, so uh, careful. Here we go. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, go a little more. Okay, finger on, check it again. Oh, a little more we can give it. Okay, check again. A little more, slight touch. Good. Okay, I okay. think he had, he had flush. Mm. That looks pretty decent. Now, he mentioned the, now we're gonna put in what's called the centralizer. It's gonna make sure that the cannula is now gonna stay in place. Can you bring it? Mm -hmm. I can hold it. Okay. So we can easily remove the instrument and insert the instrument without losing the position. Okay, that's good. 
and you can turn it out. All right. Okay. This wire is pre-bended, so it holds pretty good in the instrument. Let's see that we can see a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So what you can do now is I would take the shaver blade. Can we let it hang a little bit? That should work. Yeah, okay. okay. I really like to see a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Perfect. Here we go. Not yet. Are we getting there? Mm -hmm. So that's maybe really the most important and most difficult step of the surgery to uh, place um, uh, the cartilage punch in the right position and to have a good view. Um, to see the window perfectly, and uh, that looks really nice, Sven. So now I'm happier. So you know, yeah. you can see... Do we have this um, HF device? Yes. I can... The vapor, yeah. yeah. Okay. As you can tell, I like to take the second, but you can see a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So now you see the, the wire, it's actually perfectly place in the center of the defect. You can see now the defect and now we need to remove the cartilage ideally to collect the cartilage which we eventually going to use. Hmm? Oh yeah. So in order to do that we would remove, oops, no, remove the water. Okay. And maybe so put the second wire in here to hold it in place if you want to. I'm going to do that in a second. So when we remove the water, usually the whole thing collapses. Now, since you have the troker placed, um, it should not give you that headache because you established a solid environment around it. So that now we're going to... Is there suction? Mm -hmm. Oh, Suctionist. do you want to... Here, I mean, you look at pump. I can try this one. I have to let it run, right? Yeah. Okay, water. You need water? Yeah, anyway, anyway, I want to get the water out. Okay. I want to do dry. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, let's see. That should do it. Mm. Not fully dry yet. So, hmm, doesn't work with this here. We have a pump. It makes it difficult to remove uh -huh. the whole thing. Wait a wait. Wait a wait. Yeah. Can you put in the suction, please? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. You had no suction on the shaver, that's why I was... A... Okay. okay. Okay, oh, slowly removing the tissue. The fluid, now it becomes dry, super. And now we need to have the cartilage harvester. Again, it's going to be inserted over the wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. okay. Actually, so, it's a drill who can harvest. So, again, you can control. You have to apply a certain firm pressure, and then clockwise, you're just going to... Mm -hmm. Harvest now yeah. and remove Wonderful. the cartilage mm -hmm. from the lesion side. Okay, center. Careful, we need yeah. to see that the mm, has to be. Uh. Okay, now you see the cartilage here. So we need to have. So now we have already part. a little bit of cartilage in the Wima. That's important. So we can use this. And additionally, Sven is harvesting the rest. Um, of the cartilage pieces. Yeah, you can see that, how that it comes out. It's going to be collected. Looks really nice. Okay, perfect. Wait, you get more. One thing I done. Okay, oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. Okay, let's get the water in going again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's why. Okay. So we keep move, removing now the cartilage to a point that it really becomes clear. So I need the reamer again. 
Oh, what you see, what you see, the, the cannula has moved a little bit. So if that happens, you can check through the window what happened. You reposition it, and then you um, actually have to remove the central wire. You want to ream again or not? Uh, I would like to punch it in again, because okay. if it's not stable, so we need to take out the... Then give me the K-wire extractor. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay, here we go. Then we need the hammer. hammer. Okay, and then and punch it again. You okay, can check. let's go. Good position, perfect. A little more. A little more. Okay. No, a little more, just punch it. Good. Then the centralizer again. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you see, we're right the same position. Then take it out, no. and we continue with the reaming of the defect. Okay, let's fill it in again. Mm -hmm. Perfectly aligned, looks nice. Okay, and you want to hear it. What? Oh. See that, you, guys saw it? you should apply a firm pressure that you're going to tilt the cannula, otherwise, as, as happened before, it loses its position, but if you just apply gentle pressure in the axis, then that should be no problem. Okay, let's remove it again. And I like to have the grasper again. Now, when there's no water, you can remove it. As you saw, there was water in there, or I had the suction on, then to get lost, but we already harvested enough cartilage. So that's why it's actually suggested that when you do the reaming, that this should be done without any fluid in the joint. All right, as you can see now, we are already at the subchondral bone. Looks actually pretty fine. Looks great, yeah. And now we actually um, could, what you could do now, if you have a larger defect, we get, there's a second um, wire that can be inserted. That has on the side of the cannula an option. And just bang it in with a mallet or? Yeah. And what name is this? Where is this one? Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. Put it in. Perfect. Same height. Okay. And we can remove the central wire. Then K wire remover. Mm. Okay. And now you okay. have. I don't know if you can see it on the on the view. I can. Lift up the cannula a little bit, and now I can tilt it without losing my position to any other direction, punch it in again, and therefore I can now match the geometry of my harvest to the geometry of the defect. So now, it's like a snowman technique. So like we know it from the old procedure. It's like a for purposes technique. of the surgery, you're just going to continue now doing this one. So now, whoops, it's in, perfect. Just put in the... Okay. Mm, bang it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want the centralizer again? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Or, or bend it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> bang it in. Okay, so now while this is in place, we're going to start um, working on the membrane. I should be able now. Okay, okay perfect. So now it's important. We have two steps here on the side table. First, we used to prepare the cartilage a little bit, and since it should be minced cartilage, give me an anatomic uh, forceps, please. Yeah. Okay. It's important to cut the cartilage just in tiny pieces here to make sure that it easily fits underneath the membrane. And the membrane then should cover the cartilage pieces pretty well. So what we will do is put some cartilage pieces on the membrane and put then just one drop of fibrin glue on top of it and then use the membrane inserter to insert the 
the whole complex into the defect. So that looks nice. How, how small should be should it be? Yeah, as small as small as possible, but uh, size of a cell. Yeah, <laughs> if you can do that. But uh, I like to use a knife for doing it because um, if you use uh, uh, something to punch on it or so, maybe the cells get destroyed and I want to prevent that, so I just use a knife to cut it. Then it's always extremely important, this membrane, if we take a look at it here with our anatomic forceps, has two sides, right? So one rough side and then the top of the membrane. And the membrane needs to be cut in a wet um, Uh, you should first uh, put some water in it to make it wet and then it's easily to cut. But as soon as it uh, gets wet or is in the joint, it's hard uh, to uh, distinguish between the rough and uh, the top surface here. So we have to mark it first. That's what Stephen already did. He marked the membrane here um, with a pen. And uh, now I can use uh, some water here to put it on top. And we use the Shondor guide cutting form here. Just put some water on it. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. And now we can use the membrane cutter. That's a nice instrument. It's extremely sharp, so be sure not to damage your gloves. And then it's important to do it in a clockwise and uh, anti-clockwise um, direction uh, to make sure that you really cut the membrane completely. Just go clockwise a little bit, then in the other direction. It must be very sharp, so it, it yeah. must be single use, I presume. Absolutely, absolutely. That's important, right? And then give me the forceps. Mm. Right, and here we go. And that's how it should look, right? So now... The next step is to make sure that we can put the membrane in the membrane inserter. Hmm? Wir machen gleich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, when I do this, I give this new instruments to Sven here. I will help you then. This is a multi perforator um, for the subchondral bone. I can handle it to Sven already. Okay. The idea behind the microperforator is that the classic amic technique tries to use a cell from the assumption of bone, um, which then will be co would be covered um, by the membrane. So now you have both worlds, so to say. You have your autologous cartilage cells and the cells coming from the assumption of bone. In order to have the source of the bone, uh, we need to put in the microperforator, which we're going to do right before. We then insert the membrane and the cells. Okay, can you hold it, please? So Daniel is now putting this minced cartilage, the small pieces, onto the membrane. On, on which side of the membrane? Um, on the rough surface, that's important, because the cartilage should be underneath the membrane then. Mm. Here, look, there's more. We have much more. Mm. How much would you like to have? So personally, I would say I like to have a thin layer that fully covers the, mm -hmm. the defect size. When you do an ACI, you also don't need to apply such thick tissue. Uh, I think, I mean, there's so many cells in there, so just have a thin layer. Again, as when we ream the defect, the height of the cartilage, what is typically like two millimeters maximum if it's healthy. So don't make it too high because it's prominent. Um, it might be difficult to stick. Mm. Okay, can you hold it, please? Put some fibrin glue on it, not too much. Oops, okay, here we go. And let it sit for a second while we use the microperforator to prepare. So, may I give it to you? That is scope. So, okay. hold it. Okay. Again, first I want to visualize before I remove all the fluid. Okay. 
see. Here we go. That's the window. So now we close it again. We need to bring in the shaver to remove the fluid. Mm -hmm. We just want to take off the little bit of the fat tissue here. Mm -hmm. Still, when we bring it in, I really would like to have an unobstructed view. Okay, let's do the HF device. Okay. Stephen, can you switch the suction on the device? Okay, okay that's it. Here we go. So you see, again, make sure that it really sticks. Good. So now, if you're going to remove the fluid, Steven, again, the suction, please. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. My mistake. Okay. Okay, here we Get go. Get the fluid out. Yeah. I mean, is there an outflow cannula or something that we can remove the fluid? Okay, here we go. Because it cannot remove with a pump. It doesn't allow me to remove the fluid. Maybe open, open the yeah. suction a little bit more. No but it's no suction. Yeah. Run, but no suction. Okay. Okay, um, okay I have an idea. Um, can you cut me the cannula where the, the spinal needle is? Just take the spinal exactly. Cut the top off. Can you Just change in a maybe orthogonal way? I'll try to suck it out. Uh, it's too short. It's gonna, no, it's gonna fell in there. Okay. We we'll just we didn't wait a second. We need a different shaver blade. Yeah. The shaver blade is clogged. He's changing and we have the shaver no blade. Suction. Okay, he's changing the shaver blade. So, but you can see the defect is perfectly cleaned up already, and uh, now um, as soon as the water it's not in the joint any longer. We can insert the membrane in the next step. And the membrane is already prepared. And um, yeah, looks nice so far. Yeah, ah, mm -hmm. good. OK, that. that's the new, new shaver blade. Okay. Please put it on there. The suction, the suction. Mm -hmm. okay. Try and suction the on there. Right. OK, here Thank we you. go. Careful, the cannula doesn't move. Mm -hmm. Got it. Take care of the K wire, the central mm -hmm. wire. Do you want to take it out? Uh, let's see. Okay. Careful, jetzt. Yeah, here uh, we go. Slowly. Okay. Okay, now that looks pretty dry. So you like to do it in a dry way because of the glue? The glue in the cell that I don't want to have it move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Let's try that again. It's really... It's really yeah. Okay, Just that looks good. Yep. As dry as we can get it. Uh -huh, thanks. So now I keep the cannula. You need to mm -hmm. have the micro perforator now. Um, maybe no. I hurt yeah, really you. Not. I cannot see it from the top here. Careful. Wait. Wait. Let me hold it. Can you? Can you see it? Here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. So now you're gonna move it in. It has a hammer. It has a depth penetration stop, so to say. Okay. So and the nice thing is that it is absolutely standardized. So you have nine millimeter in depth and four millimeter distance in between the wires. Okay, it looks nice. Then we use an extractor here. And so, Stephen, please hammer on the extractor. I stabilize while he's doing it. The cannula. Mm -hmm. I'll come into the side. Okay, here we go. And now you can see the holes. 
Now we remove the centralizer. And the extractor again, please. What? Okay, here we go. And now comes the AMA cartilage jambalaya. Can you insert wait a it? second? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait. Can you wait a second? Can you want yes. to hold? The, um, can you hold the camera for a second? See, there's a little some fluid there. I'd like to remove that before, first. Okay, careful. Good. And now we can apply the construct. Move it in. Okay. Slowly. And with a gentle push. Mm -hmm. Clicks. There we go. No, not yet. Push it in. No, still gluing. Can you, can you hold the camera for a second? Just hold the camera, please. Okay. No, I guess it's pretty fixed. Push it in again. Okay. If that's the case, we'll move it out. Have to check why. Here it is. Let's put it on again. New fiber in place. Yeah, please give me the fiber and glue. Hold it. Okay, a little bit on top, just a little bit. Do you have a new cannula? Yeah, okay. here we go. Wait. Okay, thanks. Uh, we're on. Not too much. Yeah. Can you hold the camera again? Wait, can you hold the camera? I can help him with the stabilizer. Okay, here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Very nice. Now, can I have a palpation or something? Just to gently, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So we gently. I think it's it important that the, rec a little bit. the recipient side must be dry, really dry. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, yeah. Then I had a, a rasp or something. Mm. Do we have, um, or a palpation? I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, in a second we're going to apply some water, then it's going to be a little better to see. So now try to... Okay, it looks really nice. You can see the edges uh, fits perfectly together. Because that's always the case if you, uh, if you use a curette, then the cartilage shoulder doesn't uh, fit perfectly with the membrane. And in this case, it really looks perfect. Yeah, let, wait a second, let me turn on the water and the vision might, might be a little nicer. But it should obviously withstand. In fact, I'm allowed to put the water in. Let's put a little water there. Expand the whole thing. Now I'll take the palpation hook again to show you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, uh, maybe you can bend it a little bit. Take this pot away. Sure. Okay. Stephen, take it, please. Okay. So, you know, okay. so now you can still have a little bit of option and bend it a little more. Uh, sorry, no, extend. Sorry, my mistake. Uh -huh extension see if you now see a little bit of room you can still move it slightly to be quick and you see the pieces here and again if you're worried that maybe like this is a very small rim left the membrane expands cells grow out so they will eventually cover obviously the whole defect What I came out. Yeah. Is there? Sorry. All right. Let me get out here. Okay. Here we go. Got it. We can slowly gently bring it through range of motion, move it a little bit. Okay, let's put the water on again. Okay. Do we have... Um, sometimes also nice to have like a little larger like, um, instrument which can really like compress, push down a little bit. Exactly, see? 
and push it down, and then eventually just let it rest and let it heal. As you can see, this already covers about, what, 50% of the diameter of the femicondyle. If you have a larger defect, you can obviously now expand it to the lower part. Again, to adding the mince cutter, as you can see, adds a little fiddle um, part to it. But um, I think it's really important that uh, when you apply it, that right before you do it, you apply the fibrin glued. We did it before, then I did the micro um, fracture. Maybe that already allowed the fibrin glue to not be as gluey as you wish. Um, so that is one thing. The other issue, as you just said, uh, saw, it is important that you remove the water so that the glue can really um, apply to the whole thing. So now at the end of the procedure, we would bring the knee in extension, put a brace on um, to let it rest for at least, I typically leave it there for 24 hours before you get then going to start slowly putting it on a CPM machine so that the motion of the knee going to mold the membrane and um, fit it to the defect size. Okay. So when you did a great job, it looks perfect uh, now. Yeah. It's absolutely aligned with the cartilage shoulder. That's really important. So, yeah, great. Okay, thank you very much, Sven and Daniel. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation of actually two techniques. We all know that the AMIC procedure is well known, proven. We have long-term results, five to 10 years now already in a multi study. We have results from the Minsk cartilage alone. Since we started in 2008 in Munich with the first cases nowadays, it's more um, proven, it's more regulated, it's standardized more and more. Now we have a combination of these two techniques in one technique and atroscopically. So you have, can, you have just seen that with a small defect of one centimeter, it will help. It's possible to use it. But not always it's just a nice defect like we have seen now. What do you think? Shall we need or do we need, and we just think a little bit in the future, what we will do next year, five years, do we have or do we need bigger instruments, large instruments, or we have just to open the joint when we have a larger defect? My personal um, opinion is I want to have ideal access and arthroscopic procedures are nice. Um, instrumentation make it easier, but if, if I want to have full control, a small medial arthrotomy is not a big deal. The instrumentation just so can also help you in this um, like mini open approach as well. But to, in order, if I see I cannot match the geometry, especially when it's like not round or oval, like um, has like a sign of weird shape, it's very difficult with the device we have to perfectly match it. Um, so I definitely would open it. I can then cut the membrane to the size I want. I can control for the solid coverage of the subterranean membrane with the binced cartilage. So I would never ever um, exclude or even be reluctant to mini openly open uh, yeah, the joint. Yeah, new technique now you have uh, drilled or punched through the subchondral layer. And we have now some stem cells coming out. Do we need this or do we do not? So we should always argue with evidence. So what the AMA procedure has been shown, and that was a combination of microperforation plus a membrane, has been shown that in even long-term data, it has a very successful outcome. Um, now, do alternative techniques, such as means cartilage, avoiding damaging the subgenital bone, turn out as, to be as good? If they do, I obviously would prefer it because we know that some complications occur from the perforation of subcranial bones, such as interlesional osteophytes, which are really um, a problem, which you then have to do the whole thing all over again. Um, so I think future will tell us if it's either or, or maybe it's really the best that you combine both techniques. So we need to create evidence. Once we have it, I'll make a statement. Mm -hmm. May Daniel just some questions about or some thoughts about the rehabilitation just after that. Um, I would be a little bit afraid that something can happen if you go out with a scope, you do not know what happened, if it's still in place. Yeah. How can you avoid that this swimming around, moving around? 
extremely good question. I mean, um, uh, you use fiber and glue, right? So this is uh, one thing. Um, but then on the other hand, I always put my uh, patients and say them they, they have to rest for at least 24 to 48 hours just uh, with a brace, lay in the bed and uh, do nothing. And then maybe after 48 hours, uh, you can start doing an... Um, uh, uh, CPM uh, also to, to start movement of the knee, but uh, I would uh, let them rest for 48 hours. And you use a suction or not? You mean at the end of the at procedure? Drainage. Yes, at drainage. Um, just uh, very gentle. I go to the uh, laterals. If I uh, prepare the medial condyle, I would go to the notch of the lateral uh, condyle and just uh, suction it a little bit and then leave it like it is. Yeah. Okay. And Sven? I don't use drains anymore. Um, two reasons for it. One, I'm sort of a little concerned that in a very unlucky way, the membrane sucks on my membrane. But also, honestly, a little bit of blood, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's even a good thing. I mean, we're putting PRP in joints and all that stuff. Maybe a little blood is not so bad uh, in the beginning. But I have no evidence for it. That's just a personal um, observation. So... For my cartilage procedure, I don't use any drains anymore. So I agree with that. I would never use a drain, but I would uh, suction um, at the end of the procedure. I would suction the joint a little bit to get oh, the water out. Okay. That, oh, absolutely. Yes. But I would not use a drain at the end. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we have consents. Yeah. The other thing I learned yeah. is, I mean, especially with the Minsk cartilage procedure, I was very concerned. Do you? I mean, you see it's a little brittle, um, and also when you see the membrane, um, to not move the leg. But I have to admit, pref I prefer now at the end of it actually do remove move the leg because if it comes out, it's unfortunate, but you can do it again. If it comes out the next day, that's very unfortunate. So uh, you will be surprised how stable the construct is. Um, the fluid um, of the membrane really kind of really glues to the whole um, construct. And as we just said, after two days, you want to put them on a CPM machine. So it's better be stable at the time of surgery as well. Yeah. It was an, a nice procedure, but it's difficult to do it, uh, to do it in an outpatient setting because you have to stay, you have to rest for 24 hours. Yeah, I agree. I don't do it in an outpatient setting. I totally agree with okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as we say, I, I don't do ACL surgery, for example, in an outpatient setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is uh, such a patient that would be perfect for such a procedure because uh, ahead of the surgery, I talk to my patients and I tell them, okay, they... Usually they want an arthroscopic procedure and I tell them what I plan to do, what is my plan. And then I see intraoperatively, oh, he needs really cartilage regeneration. And then such a patient maybe is uh, not lucky if he wakes up and he has a scar like four or five centimeter on his knee. So this would be the perfect patient uh, to do such an arthroscopic procedure. And so I plan to um, do them uh, and, and an inpatient uh, so in the, to keep them in the hospital for at least two days anyways. So. Okay. And let's think about bigger defects. Let's say two centimeters, two square centimeters. You think the using the snowman technique, changing the rotation of this is helpful or you need some, uh, something special, some special devices or... I think it's uh, it's good to do, but it's always important uh, to have an uh, absolutely autograd uh, direction um, um, to the cartilage surface. And um, if this is not possible, you cannot really do it. And uh, also, if the defect uh, then is on the troch layer where the surface is maybe a little bit more um, uh, bent, then you should be very careful and don't do it. But if you have an a good view on the um, on the surface of the cartilage and the autograd in an autograd direction, then you can do it. Yeah, I think if it's on the on the flat femoral condyle, then it's easy to do it. But as long as it's more on the left or medial or lateral side, it's very difficult because that, I think it doesn't work now with this kind of instrumentation. We have to work on this instrumentation. The biggest problem is it's in the dorsal part of the uh, oh, thing because then you have to go into deflection. The whole tissue collapses. No way. Yeah. So. Obviously, there are limitations. So that's a nice feature, um, which gives you some easier way to apply the things. But I very much agree. Um, cartilage surgery requires a whole bandwidth. Yeah. I think it's a good indication now, a good technique. But uh, yeah, when we have bigger defects, we still can open. We can still suture it. I think that was, would be a possibility for complications 
if it doesn't stay in place, you still can use some suture to keep it. So. I mean, that's for me so important. That's why I use it actually the most because um, some defects, due to their size, obviously I have, I mean, you have a bunch of minced cartilage parts mm -hmm. and there's always an area of weakness, mechanical weakness. And since we want now to actually progress our patient as soon as possible, I very much prefer to have a membrane put on top. I can actually, I personally even like to suture it on top. So it's like a, uh, it's a tent on top of the whole thing to protect it. And then I feel more comfortable um, that the whole thing I'm going to stay in place. But it has been described that dislocation of membranes is a known problem. Now imagine you even make it more unstable because you have some minced tissue below. So, I mean, I'll leave it up to the judgment of each surgeon. But for me, certain defects require a fixation of the device of the membrane to the defect. And you think we need really the fibrin glue? When I fix it with sutures, no. Yes. But now we have glue. It could be like a barrier between the bone and the cells. and the <laughs> yeah, Maybe, but on the other hand, if you use uh, the sutures, then maybe you can damage uh, the surrounding cartilage a little bit. So there are pro and cons, I guess. So mm. yeah, limitations for but, both techniques. Yeah, and sutures are boring. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there is good evidence out there that they tried different type of tissues on Schonder side proliferation and vitality. So that has been shown it works. So that may be less of a concern. Um, plus, I'm pretty sure that that glue probably disappears yeah. in a very soon future. But it's the same with the membrane. The membrane also disappears after six weeks. I think it's more that you develop a mechanically stable clod. Mm out of whatever biological parts we put in there. Maybe. Now, let's think about a little bit in the future. Do you think in five years we are still doing the same? I absolutely believe that we must um, continue having repetitions for cartilage because cartilage is such an important tissue for the l longevity of a functional knee joint. So we have no alternative because the damage is going to be there in the future. Mm -hmm. So I must have some strategies to fix it. Um, whether it's single stage or double stage, obviously everybody wants a single stage procedure, no question. The tissue we get is good, it's not great. I mean, we don't get 100% hyaluronic um, tissue. So I hope there are going to be improvements. Mm -hmm. But you know better than me, cartilage research exists for the last 35 years. <laughs> Not major steps, no leaps. I mean, ASA has been a leap, I have to agree, yeah. but there are no major leaps we've done. Yeah, when we started the first cartilage transplantation in yeah, 96, 95, <laughs> it's a long way, still a long way. Daniel? Ab absolutely, it is, but uh, there are new techniques uh, evolving, and, but it's always, um, as you mentioned, Sven, extremely important that uh, we uh, have, have it evidence-based, that we stay scientific, and so maybe it takes uh, the next five years to get good results about the new procedures as well. So um, I'm pretty sure maybe in five years we are still doing the same, but maybe in 10 years we're doing something different, we see. Yeah. But um, Andreas, I mean, you've been involved in this minced cartilage for quite some time. Now, what, I mean, there has been a reason why you did it. What are you concerned and what do you think are really pros? Like, what are really arguments for that technique? I think there are several pros. You can do it atoscopically, you can do it in one stage. You don't need to go to a lab. You never know what happened between you, surgery, lab, and back and forth. Um, you, have, you don't need some additional problems, parts, instruments, whatever. So it's an easy, fast, uh, and quite safe procedure. And I still think that we need some more results. We need some experimental results. What happened really with the cells? How many of these cells survive? We don't know exactly. I think we need some more basic research on this topic. I mean, I'm pretty sure that people who viewed that procedure might be concerned when we remit. Are we like not really applying any damage to the tissue? I think there's also so room for improvement for the companies to develop instrumentation that are more gentle. Do but I think it. I like the procedure now because it's really gentle. It's not a machine drilling on high speed and some, some heat problems, something like that. So I like the procedure. So now we are coming to the end and I would like to ask Sven now that just tell us the take home message. So for today's procedure, um, I would actually give you some technical issues because you just saw me also starting at some point. So number one, you need to be able to really put the harvester place 
harvester ideally. Ideally means depth-wise, that it's really stable in the cartilage, and also that you are orthogonal. So that is uh, deep enough and orthogonal. Second, when you do the procedure, have a shaver of a fitting size that you can really remove the fluid. My shaver blade was too small. I could not get any suction. You saw there was fluid in, and then you struggle a little bit to really make sure you either have an outflow cannula or something that makes sure that you can really remove fluid. Because that's really important when you apply the membrane that it actually it, it, it sticks and attaches to the bone. And lastly, I did it in the beginning, and that spent a lot of time, enough time on prepping lesion site mm. so that when you move in and out that you have an unobstructed view. In terms of the technology, AMIC has been proven. I like the idea of combining it with a cartilage mincing, uh, mince cartilage procedure, single step. Now we just wait what our results going to show. Now we see. Okay, so thank you very much the two surgeons. It was a wonderful demonstration. Thanks to the company, Geistlich Company in Switzerland. It was a wonderful presentation and stay with us. We are coming back with the next topic. Mm.